Wilson returned home to even more disappointment. Instead of enthusiastic support for the treaty and the League of Nations, he found most Americans were now disinterested in foreign policy and wanted to return to the pre-war atmosphere of isolationism. The Republican-controlled Congress, led by Wilson's adversary, Senator Henry Cabot Lodge, insisted Wilson alter some of the provisions of the treaty. Wilson was equally stubborn and refused even the smallest compromise. In turn, Wilson, despite the advice of his doctors and close friends that his health was fragile, took his proposals directly to the public. He set out on an 8,000-mile tour of the nation, delivering 35 speeches in 22 days to convince Americans that the treaty deserved approval. He hoped public opinion would force the Senate to agree to the treaty and join the League of Nations. Americans greeted him as enthusiastically as had the Europeans. In late September of 1919, in Pueblo, Colorado, he ended his speech by saying to the crowd, There seems to me to stand between us and the rejection or qualification of this treaty, the serried ranks of those boys in khaki, not only those boys who came home, but those dear ghosts that still deploy upon the fields of France. The campaign, however, proved too much for President Woodrow Wilson. On October 2nd, he collapsed and was rushed back to the White House. Wilson lay as an invalid as a result of his stroke for more than two months. Still, the Senate failed to ratify the treaty. The United States Senate eventually signed a separate peace treaty with Germany, but never joined Wilson's beloved League of Nations. Three amendments were passed during the Wilson administration. The 17th, providing direct election of senators. The 18th, outlawing alcohol. And the 19th, granting suffrage for women. He is remembered for his progressive reforms, for his failed attempt to convince the Senate to join the League of Nations, and for his prophecy of 1919 that proved chillingly correct 20 years later. I can predict with absolute certainty that within another generation there will be another world war if the nations of the world do not concert the method by which to prevent it. America remained an observer at League of Nations meetings, but without U.S. participation, the League lacked clout and eventually faltered.